Today's COVID update is brought to you by Fultech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. And well... And welcome back. We begin our first conversation this morning with the Minister of Health and Wellness, Kevin Bernard, who joins us virtually. Good morning, Minister Bernard. Good morning. Good, good morning, April, and good morning, Isani. Uh, thank you for, for having me. And of course, uh, good morning to all the Belizeans uh, and all those viewers watching around the world uh, uh, over, over your uh, uh, social media platform. Uh, but of course, uh, it's, always, it's always important uh, for us uh, to be able to dialogue and, and, and thank you for this opportunity. Certainly. I want to begin, first of all, by asking you, what's your take on what has happened over the course of the weekend? I know with April 1st coming and the relaxation and the further relaxation of some of the regulations and restrictions that were in place, I believe that more people have been out, more people are moving around. What is your take on what has happened since the April 1st? Well, well, it's an I think that... Um you know, it's been a while that uh, Belizeans have been waiting uh, for this moment. Um, we had said from the very onset that as we go along, we'll be, we were going to be looking at monitoring um, the, the, the whole issue with COVID and, and seeing that the numbers have been steadily going down um, and in a manageable manner, uh, Cabinet felt that it was now time for us to remove all other restrictions uh, and so we started that process from in march and and, and, and then on april 1st of course then we, we removed all other restrictions except for those that we we left there that um, pertains to the border and the, the exit and entry of uh, into belize whether through land sea or or, or by air uh, but i think that uh just let me just let me say though uh, sure. that generally i think that despite the fact that we have done that we still have uh, Belizeans uh, who are, are still doing their part, still maintaining uh, their their distance, still avoiding crowds, and and, and some still wearing their masks. So mm -hmm. um, that's an individual choice, and that's an individual responsibility. And and, and this is why we said we not we need to, to learn to live with COVID responsibly. And I and I hope that. Uh, uh, I, you know, I've, I've been out here on the diaspora uh, visit, and so I haven't um, been able to really firsthand see mm -hmm. what have been the movement in terms of uh, people on the ground itself. Uh, but I think that for the most part, people are still generally cognizant and, and aware of the fact that the, the, the virus is still here. And, and that's, that's our message to them, that the virus is still here um, while it's uh, very much uh, at, at minimal level for Belize, and we feel that it is uh, in, a, in a, a, a manageable position, um, we, 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 we had to um, remove these restrictions. Um, there are still uh, several questions, I think, um, coming from the public uh, about the, yes. you know, the lifting of, of certain regulations, uh, especially for those that are, that are traveling. Um, can you please highlight some of the the restrictions that have been lifted for international traveling, um, whether it be about vaccination and, and testing? Uh, just brief us a little bit about how that is working. I know for a fact that everybody's trying to get out um, and also trying to come in. And uh, so just uh, some clarification, please, on those um, those new regulations. Well, definitely. From from uh, well, in fact, the traveling, uh, the border restrictions um, from the previous SI in March when we made the first amendment, the first uh, removal of some restrictions, the the specific ones that deal with border entry and exit uh, has to do with one. Let me talk about the tourists first. Uh, foreigners, foreigners coming into the country of Belize, whether through by land, whether through uh, air, whether through sea. Um, one, uh, they must provide proof of uh, immunization. I mean, in, in this case, being um, they have to provide the evidence that they have been vaccinated. So you can come in as a tourist, whether you are vaccinated or not. But if you are not vaccinated, 
or wherever you come in, you're, and you're vaccinated, all you need to do is provide a proof of vaccination. If you are not vaccinated, however, and you're a foreign tourist, and you're coming in through either, air, air, uh, either ports, land, air, or sea, then you must provide a rapid test within uh, 48 hours or a PCR test that was taken within 72 hours of your flight. Uh, so that is for foreign tourists. Mm -hmm. The lesions now going out of the country, exiting the country as it applies to Belizeans, with over the years of 12 and above, you must be vaccinated. Um, we felt that we need to, needed to keep that restriction in place uh, for, for a few more time. Um, when we consulted, uh, we felt that it was important uh, to keep that restriction. Uh, one, because as you know, we are slowly we are slowly rebounding as well, but at the same time, we want to encourage our Belizeans. We want to encourage our Belizeans that we need for our people uh, and more our people to get vaccinated. We don't have the vaccinations as yet in hand for the ages five to eleven, the pediatric vaccines. We are working arduously and getting those uh, in country. Uh, I know through the discussions with our people, our, our people at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and my, uh, you know, with, uh, in discussion with uh, Minister Courtney, we have been making very much great progress. Uh, I must say that uh, we are just awaiting final uh, responses from the UK, from the EU, and and I believe in Spain. Uh, we have had uh, commitments coming from those three areas uh, to provide Belize with the periodic vaccines. Now. When before March 1st, I think, and this is what sometimes people are, are, are a bit confused, um, Belizeans leaving and coming back, uh, there was the condition at the time where once you had uh, exited the country or coming in after uh, 72 hours, they had at the time requested that you had to test. That restrictions were lifted from March 1st. We, we removed that requirement for Belizeans coming back in. Um, after a long stay, um, they no longer need to be tested. And, and likewise, I want to make it absolutely clear because there are still some confusions and, 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 and this is one reason why we, we, we removed those specific and highlighted specifically in the SI um, that for ages 5 to 11, um, children ages 5 to 11 can exit the border rather than because we don't have the vaccines uh, in, in country. So despite that they are unvaccinated, they can leave. These are children. Uh, and so they are traveling along with their parents who would generally be vaccinated. And, okay. and, and so we, uh, we did not want to, to put that restriction uh, uh, not to allow. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Minister. Um, can you please uh, repeat that for me? Uh, we seem to have had a little bit of a, um, a disconnect Oh, just a minute ago. Yes, sorry. Uh, what I was saying that in terms of Belizeans, five years and or, or, or 11 years and below, and below mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Um, we don't have vaccines for five to 11 because we don't vaccinate people under five. Mm -hmm. uh, and so children within the, those age range are allowed to leave the country along with their parents. Of course, they cannot leave the country without an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, but so they are allowed to leave the country. Coming back in, um, uh, as I said, before March 1st, there were restrictions as in, in terms of them coming in after a long stay, after a three night stay. Uh, initially it was after 24 hours, then we, we, we made the amendment after 36 hours, and then we completely removed that restriction mm -hmm. where they were asking uh, when they come in back that they were needing to, to uh, take a test at the border. That completely was removed. Uh, and so Belizeans can go over, stay for a week in Cancun if they so like. Uh, of course, we want our Belizeans to keep at home and celebrate your, 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 your country. Uh, but that is their personal choice. I'm just saying that as an individual. Uh, but the, there's no longer a requirement for Belizeans who stay more than three, uh, three days to be tested at the border. Mm -hmm. That restriction has now been lifted. Let me ask you a broader question here, Minister. 
how careful are we in terms of the message we are sending out to the public with the further relaxation of cer certain restrictions against the fact that there is a potential for another wave of um, infections? Well, well Isani and, and, and April, what is important to understand, and as I mentioned, this is, this is really uh, a, a, a personal, it now becomes a personal choice. Mm -hmm. It now becomes, uh, um, in, you know, it is up to me, it is up to you. Um, and I think we have been doing, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the government has done its part by making sure that there's vaccine in country. Now, what we need to do is continuously uh, remind our Belizean people that yes, while we are removing these restrictions, we must be aware that COVID is still here. Um, we cannot uh, lose sight of that and we cannot uh, turn a blind eye to it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't let the guards down. So. I always, and our Ministry of Health and Wellness is saying, we continue to encourage our Belizean people. Do what is responsible of you to protect yourselves, uh, to protect your families, to protect your loved ones, and to protect those you care about. Um, and, and I say this because, Isani, I, for example, I, I've always said, if I'm out there, I wear my mask. If I'm indoor, I still wear my mask mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm protecting not only myself, I'm protecting my daughter who has not been able to be vaccinated. I'm protecting my elderly uh, uh, parents, my, my elderly, uh, my, my in-laws who are also of age. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're protecting those we care about. Uh, and so we want to encourage religions um, to understand this. Uh, and, and, and then if you feel that you don't want to be out uh, in crowds, then too, um, you know, uh, it, it is now a personal choice. It's now up to 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 to, to you, and and that's one of the reasons why we felt it was uh, it was time um, that we were able to remove. It's a good time to remove the restrictions uh, because our numbers are very low. Um, so and then the, 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 some of this responsibility now shift uh, to the individual. Um, we have to learn uh, to live with COVID design. My other follow-up question, now that we're discussing that, so <clears throat> the National Agriculture and Trade Show um, resumes this year, and naturally people are also expecting that um, Carnival will also be back on stream, along with Seems all like these other, other, other fests. public events. Yes. yes. Um, is there any consideration um, for you know any spread or any... Um, outbreak of infections with these public events coming up? There's always, at, at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, of course, our team uh, of, 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 of technical persons and, and doctors are always worried uh, that, that any such major uh, gathering can contribute to a spread. I, I, I will say this, uh, and, I, and I repeat this, uh, when we had the um, Ruta Maya, there were concerns. Um, when we had the Spanish Lookout uh, Business Expo, there were concerns. They, these individuals uh, came and worked along with our ministry, uh, set out certain guidelines. Uh, and, and this is one of the reasons why I said again, and I keep repeating, it is a responsibility of, our indi of individuals. Organizers can have as much preparation put in place, but if Belizeans don't adhere to, to, the, to, to these things, uh, then that's where we can end up in, in situation. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a known fact that the virus spreads from person to person. And so if you are around crowds, there's a possibility it can happen. Um, there's a possibility that, 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 that there can be a spread. And while we must always be prepared for those things, we must always be ready uh, to ensure that, uh, that, that as a ministry, we are we are prepared. I think over the past two plus years, um, our, our frontline workers have done a phenomenal job uh, working the front of this pandemic, um, working 
additional hours, putting a strain um, on, the, on, on, on them and as, as an individual. You know, many nurses and doctors had to work, barely see their, their family. Um, and so I'm asking and pleading to the Belizean people, continue to be responsible because you have to also think about those who had to toil, who had to put their life at the front uh, in, 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 in fighting this pandemic for the benefit of our country. Mm -hmm. um, and so while the National Agriculture Show is coming up on, uh, pretty soon, we have to understand that we need to open up a bit. We need to, we need to, we need to, we need to um, free up our, our country. Activities have to start to get back to, 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 to a level of normalcy, which we are trying to ensure that that happens. That, but we must be responsible. That leads uh, me to a, um, a, another question then, Minister. Uh, uh, when it came to, to making the decision to, to let up certain um, restrictions and so forth, uh, what do you say then to Belizeans who don't want to get vaccinated? We, our vaccination rate is still pretty low compared to other countries. Uh, what do you say to those that are like, well, the country they open up, but I don't need to get no vaccine. Everybody's good. Thing done. What, what well, do you say to that? Well, I want to encourage, let me say this. Let me say this. And I always use this figure. 317 Belizeans died during this pandemic who had no access to a vaccine. We did not have the vaccines at the time. Mm -hmm. And we lost 317 Belizeans. I am pretty sure that if we had the vaccine in hand from the very onset of the pandemic, we wouldn't have lost so much out of that 317 Belizeans. I say this to drive home the point. Government has invested in thousands upon thousands of vaccines. We still have over 240 something thousand vaccines in hand. And I'm encouraging the legion to go out and get vaccinated. Uh, but uh, let me also say this though, April, um, while you mentioned that we may not be as high as some other countries, I think in the region, we are one of the best countries countries in terms of level of vaccination. When you look at Jamaica at a very low vaccination rate and other, and other uh, countries within the same region, Belize, let, let me just point out the data quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we, at a first dose, based on the last data I had, we were at 50.09%. We have reached the 50% mark for persons with one dose. With, it's two, with persons with the two dose, we were at about 40, almost 49%. And I believe that with the, the recent figures that we got, we should jump the 50% mark with people completely with what we call fully vaccinated because the booster is just uh, another um, person who, who want to get that booster. Okay. But when you look at the target population, the target population was 12 years and above because we don't have the pediatric vaccine. We are at almost 70% of our population that from the targeted population uh, that have been vac fully vaccinated. And so we have, we have been doing great as a Belizean, uh, as a country, um, in terms of the, the, in the uptake across the, the world, um, there has been that issue. Um, and I think that I, 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 I must commend Dr. Bear. I must come in um, the, our frontline workers um, and all those volunteers uh, who came out and assisted the ministry and all those field works, all those visits, all those mobile clinics, everybody that um, said, you know, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to fight this pandemic head on and we are going to work together to ensure that Belizean people and, and, and of course the Belizean people who took the vaccine. We must do our part. We must understand that there are still a vulnerable population among us. So let us do that to protect our elderly. Let us do that to protect those who have major illness. Let us protect our young who are at this point in time still unable to be vaccinated because we don't have access to the pediatric vaccine. And, and, and so I want to encourage uh, those who are still hesitant 
to, to, to get vaccinated. Uh, vaccination save lives. We have seen that. Uh, and so we need to make sure uh, that, that, that we, we continue. And this one a reason um, on April and Isani, mm -hmm. that Dr. Bear and her team, we are now, what we have done, um, we have now taken all those persons who are COVID enforcers, who are uh, working at the, on the mobile sites, to go out into the, and work very hard as a, as a we're going to be pushing a very vigorous uh, campaign drive on the ground, house to house, trying to reach out to those same individuals who have not been vaccinated and encourage them to be vaccinated. I am very sure that whenever we get the pediatric vaccines in country and the campaign that we're going to put forward, working with the Ministry of Education, working with the parents, um, we are going to be able to achieve even uh, more uh, persons uh, with the vaccines uh, within, within, within that time period that we're expecting to get uh, these vaccines. So I am I'm very optimistic. I, 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 have, I have faith in our Belizean people. Um, as I said here over the uh, past two days that we've been visiting our Belizean in diaspora, um, and thanks to them too, who have also made significant contributions back home. Um, you know, Belizean on a whole, we are resilient people. And I and I must give thanks uh, to God uh, for, for 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 all those as well, um, Belizeans who continue to to do their part. And of course, I encourage everybody else who have not been vaccinated to get vaccinated. Well, with that said, then, then Minister, can you then expand a little bit more on um, the regulations for nightclubs, um, indoor activities, uh, and so forth? Because when we talk about vaccines, and, and this was a question that I had I had provided for, uh, I think the board members that did the Spanish Co Expo about do people have to be vaccinated when they come to the Expo and so forth. So what are the, the new guidelines for indoor activities for people that are opening up bars again, nightclubs, casinos, um, and so forth? <clears throat> Well, there's no more. There's no more restrictions as it relates to those um, indoor events, uh, outdoor okay. events. Um, um, we removed the entire mask mandate. Um, now, let me say this, however, mm -hmm. I, and I we got uh, very clear here. For example, if you as an individual business so choose that your policy now mm -hmm. remains that you must wear a mask in when you visit my establishment, that's a policy of the establishment. Yeah. Okay. It's no longer a mandated requirement. For example, in the bank, let me just use a simple example. In the banks, when you go to the bank, there's no law that says you can't wear your shades in the bank. But the bank has a policy. Mm -hmm. There are banks who have a policy. You cannot come into the bank with shades on. Mm -hmm. So that's an internal policy of the bank. And likewise, an establishment, a hospital, a medical facility, or any person, any institution can set their own regulation, their own rules for their business. So if 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 a, if a business owner say, I I don't, I believe, uh, or they had set their own policy, you know what? We, we are going to continue our own protocols in the controlling yeah. of the spread of the virus. And we don't, we will not allow persons in the store without a mask on. That's the choice of that business establishment. It's a matter of policy now. Uh, Likewise, in the Ministry of Education, when we, when we launched this, the question was, what about the children? The Ministry of Health and Wellness also felt that um, we must encourage the younger population to continue to wear the mask, right? But it was not being mandated by the SI. So when we spoke to the Ministry of Education, uh, they, they, they responded that they will continue, they will ask their managers, their general, their, their school managers, to continue to follow the protocols within the school system especially for our younger population who have not been able to, to have access to the pediatric vaccine. And they are doing that. And, I, and, and of course, I, again, I say this. If you go to, a, if you go to a, a location or an event and you feel that you, you are not safe, then, then wear a mask. If you so want to wear a mask, wear a mask. You know? So mm. these are things that I wanted to, to, to just make that, that, that one uh, clarification there, April. Uh, in terms of, of, of the mandate. Now, before, let me just also say what also was one of the things that we, we, uh, we, we said uh, in terms of the restriction. So in terms of the tourist, tourist 
coming in, going out, deletions, exiting, uh, and, and, and all the other restrictions that had to be lifted. So in terms of the clubs, um, the bars, the, 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 the concerts, there's no restriction that exists um, by the SI or by, by the public uh, health regulation that we the COVID. Uh, there's no longer those restrictions. Well, then uh, that leads me then to, to, to wonder or, or to think what are the future preparedness mm -hmm. for the ministry moving forward? Um, we were, Isani and I were just talking about, you know, let's not go back to the way we were in terms of certain <laughs> attitudes towards um, pandemic. So what is the ministry now doing in terms of preparedness um, if in case we're to have another wave? Because like uh, all other doctors have been reminding us, it is not over. One of the things that the Ministry of Health and Wellness is very cognizant of, and we have said this very publicly, that COVID is still here. Mm -hmm. And should we have any outbreak, any major issue, we will come back to cabinet. We will go back to cabinet and make some uh, recommendations. Now, I can tell you this, that I don't believe that we are going to go that drastic to a stage unless it really needs to, where we have to lock down our country. We cannot afford to do that. Uh, we cannot afford, uh, we, we're, we're just rebounding our Belizean people. Some, many of those who lost their job are finally getting back the job. Some are still trying to get back a job. And so we need to look at all those factors as well. But at the same time, uh, um, April, uh, we at the ministry, we have looked at what has happened. We have looked, uh, we have seen the experience. And I think uh, for the most part, we have uh, a great team of doctors and nurses who are ready and prepared uh, should there be any outbreak. Now, remember, I'm speaking at the public health sector, but there's also people in the private sector who have even gone beyond um, many of the work in preparing, in, 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 in making sure that they assist during this whole pandemic. Uh, and, and so I believe that should there be the need uh, for any uh, changes, uh, we're going to make sure that it's also changes that uh, we'll see. Uh, of course, we have to we have to look at the numbers. We have to look at what is happening around us. Uh, I I just got information yesterday that there's another sub variant somewhere in the UK identified, mm -hmm. and there are still studies being done about that. There have been variants popping up all over BA one, BA two, and we have we have seen where in some countries it's taken a spike, but it has also. Um, uh, been quickly dissipating, you know, so we have to monitor what is happening around us, yes, uh, but we must be prepared. And that's why I keep saying this. I use the fact that in Belize, while many other countries are still suffering from COVID, in Belize, we, we have done what we believe was right in the control and spread of this virus. We are down to uh, 202 cases as of, uh, Friday. As of the Friday. Mm -hmm. um, that shows that we are doing, we are doing great. Yeah. As a country, it is not, we did not do what the U.S. did. We did not do what Mexico did. We did not do what the Bahamas did. We did Belize. And our team of doctors and nurses including government, made these tough decisions. Tough decisions that saw lockdown, curfew, uh, many restrictions. And it worked for Belize. And, and, and I think we have given uh, and shown uh, to our region and to the world that we have capable people. We have right-thinking Belizeans that can make the right decision. And we have Belizeans, for the most part, who had been following the regulations. And I want to encourage Belizeans to continue to do so. Continue to be responsible. Continue to adhere to your own set of rules now. Because it's now your responsibility to let control me, this. Let me go in a slightly different direction for a few minutes here. So we have 
a trifecta of medical officers who have taken up certain posts. This was <coughs> after the Director of um, Health Services post has, had been um, dissolved. Let's talk firstly about the composition of this particular trifecta in terms of Dr. Manzanero's role, Dr. Uh, Musa's role, and the third role for the, the other office here. Speak to us a bit about that. Well, well, we are still in the final process. Let me just clarify um, that while um, the interviews and the approvals have been done, we are still uh, just waiting for one final process to be completed. Um, when the entire DHS post was, was, uh, was removed and, and separated into three different functions. Um, now remember, move, running a ministry isn't easy and uh, one person cannot uh, make all the decisions. Uh, let me say this uh, absolutely. And, and that's one of the reasons I felt uh, that we, we, we saw the need that was, was there to, to, to split the work and, and, and put the direction and, and, and where we want to go as a ministry. Now, that was changed into a, a director of hospital services and allied health, mm -hmm. a director of public health and wellness, mm -hmm. So you will have a director that will focus uh, on hospital services and allied health and, and, and push that direction. Uh, we have a director who will focus on the public health sec section of the, mini of, the, of the work of the health system and of course the wellness side. And then we have uh, Dr. Manzanero who will function as a director of international cooperation. There's a lot of work we do uh, with partners uh, with Comisca, with, with other uh, agents, PAHO, UNDP, great work. And so we need also somebody that could direct uh, the whole process, make, uh, you know, so Dr. Manzano will play a very important role in all of this. Uh, Dr. Musa, as you, as you well know, uh, is the person who uh, went through the interview, got the, uh, got the approval by the commission, uh, and we're just waiting for that final. I think, believe we should be getting that pretty soon. And I can tell you this, and I, I know um, she's a very humble lady. Um, and, and, and every time I get the opportunity, I see it. And sometimes I might get myself into trouble, but I believe that Dr. Musa has done a splendid job. She was put at the forefront uh, of this pandemic uh, to lead the initiatives of, this, uh, of the work of the ministry. And she did an exemplary job. In fact, when you speak to people within the central region, uh, you hear of the the level and caliber of commitment uh, that Dr. Musa brings uh, to this ministry, to her work, the passion she has. And so I must say this, that I so fully support uh, the fact that we now we have Dr. Musa that will be leading the public health and wellness section. And Dr. Dr. I think it's Jorge Polanco. I, I keep mm -hmm. forgetting, I keep confusing <laughs> Julio or Jorge. <laughs> we have Dr. Uh, but Dr. Polanco, yeah. who has again, another wealth of experience. Mm -hmm. He was the, the director of health services before, served as the deputy director of health services, has had um, international uh, uh, work with international partners. I know he worked with PAHO. Uh, you know, so he brings great knowledge uh, and expertise uh, to, to the team. And so when you put all that together, uh, and of course with the ministry, uh, lead myself and, 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 and Dr. Sabido and all the technical people. I think we have a great team. Uh, and I think that is where we, our focus is. COVID had, had taken all the front line approaches. We now need to focus on mental health. We now need to put aggressive campaign on addressing the issue of nutrition in this country. We now need to focus on the wellness side of our ministry. Mm -hmm. While a lot of these things were, were being addressed, COVID took prevalence. We have to focus on HIV. Uh, that's still something affecting our, 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 our country. The NCDs, diabetes, cancer, you know, all of these things are still there. And so our focus is on that. Our focus has to be on how we're going to ensure that there's a better, improved uh, support for mental health patients, from for mental health on a whole, because it's not just it's not just the persons who are ill uh, mentally, but it's 
to focus on all the stresses, all the effects of COVID had as well on a men, in a mental state mm -hmm. of one person. So we need to be aggressive on that. We need to be able to support uh, from a ministry standpoint. We need to ensure that we are addressing all of these issues head on and have the available resources uh, to be able to provide support for those who are having these issues. And, and so that is the approach we are, we are, we are, we are doing. And I think that is where that the, these very effective and, and, and good experienced doctors will be able to help the ministry in moving into the right direction. And, and, and that was one of the reasons when I asked uh, the lesions, give me at least three months uh, for us to be able to put a great team together. Mm -hmm. And we are now achieved that. And I think that you will all see uh, great things coming out of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Like I said, we have great people working in the ministry, and I want to thank all of them. Um, I mean, just being there for now three months, they have seen the commitment, the drive, the passion uh, that these people have. And I keep saying to them, we're here to work together. I don't care who, what, what's your background, religiously, uh, by whatever race you have, whatever uh, political uh, perspective you have, we are here. <laughs> push the agenda to ensure that we improve uh, care for people, that we provide quality primary care for Belizean people. And as Dr. Motto says, equal health for all. Let me take a, a, a word of the Prime Minister in his budget presentation. And I think very, very important uh, to point out. I'm glad you're going to go there because I have a follow-up <laughs> question. Go ahead. If we work together, and this is my motto too. If we work together as a Belizean, fairly, with inclusion, that's the only way we will have a prosperous Belize. And that is why we, I want to see at the ministry. And that is what I think these three persons and all the other technical people will bring to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. All right, so let me ask you this then. April 1st, the new financial year began. The budget for the Ministry of Health and Wellness, do you believe that uh, with these new changes in place and the fact that there seems to be a recession, so to speak, in the number of infections that we're experiencing, that the allocations for this financial year is sufficient for the work of the Ministry of Health and Wellness? Let me say this. There is never enough budget and I uh, coming from an accounting background a budget is what it is a budget mm -hmm. we need to be responsible enough to ensure that what we are what we need to do falls within what we can afford while in every ministry there will always be need for more to be able to do more to be able to uh, our health infrastructure physical infrastructure is not what we, where we want it to be. So if we are to invest really on the in major infrastructure in this country, okay, we will need more money. But that's why we are saying we also need to be able to look out and get support from others. So Our, mm -hmm. Go ahead. in relation to your question in terms of the budget, in saying that it will be sufficient enough there will never be enough money, uh, Isani, uh, to run any ministry. But it is us as leaders, as, as, the, as, as finance officers, as CEO, as technical persons, to ensure we put where the priority our areas are, to invest in the last priority areas. Are you there, Minister? To... Uh, are you hearing me? We're not hearing no, you. I'm not hearing you, sorry. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Are you hearing me now? Okay. We're not okay. hearing you, Minister. We have a break in the audio. Just give us a few seconds to work. All right. So, yeah, just, just to yeah. kind of go back to the discussion while we get the Minister back online with his audio. I Are think you hearing me now? With April 1st being the beginning of the fiscal year for 2022, and the idea that there is a projection as to how much money mm -hmm. is going to be needed to run the affairs of 
the ministry against what we're seeing is a decline in numbers. I think people are I, looking Sunny at that and, uh, to see April, are, are you whether me? I, 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 there is enough for there to be focus on other areas because the minister was saying, okay, we're moving away from focusing solely on COVID-19 related issues yes. versus now going back to the NCDs, going back to right. other infections, including HIV, mm -hmm. that may have somewhat taken a back, back seat, seat yeah. to COVID, right? So that was the context of the question. Yeah. Because I think people are also looking to that now. Right, and, and we, what we have learned about this pandemic is that it's not just about insufficient funds or, or not enough funds, mm -hmm. but we also didn't have enough manpower. We didn't have enough resources. And so, yes, when it came to, to, to finances, that's a huge problem because you obviously need to pay workers, you need to buy resources, you need to buy um, equipment and so forth. Um, but, you know, when it comes to... to certain uh, other diseases and so forth, I've realized that, that Belize has good diplomatic relations mm -hmm. with, with not just other countries, but with uh, various organizations, yeah. um, which I think need to be, need to be discussed, right? Yeah. So yes, even though we talk about the SIs and we, um, um, the, the new mandates and we talk about um, the new fiscal year, the finances that are going to be implemented, um, I, I think that there is a lot to say about how much help Belize has had mm -hmm. during this, this time. Yeah. And um, I hope that we're able to keep those, um, those networks in place. If we, if we have the minister back online, yes. perhaps he can speak to some of those partnerships mm -hmm. in terms of the aid that has been given to Belize to fight this pandemic. Yes. Are you there with us, minister? Yeah, yes, Sistani, I'm here. I, oh. I, I understand I was being heard on the on the TV, so I I, I, I don't I'm not sure okay. if it was. All right, so we can't extent. hear you. <laughs> it was on our end. Yes, Forgive yeah. us. Uh, but but definitely, um, I want to point out that you raise a very important thing there, and that was I was going to that, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and when I said reason why we have to reach out to other partners, and and we have been getting the support of our partners in development uh, to the, to PAHO to UNDP. Um, you know, we work very closely with PAHO in accessing. Um, quality medication at, at, at reasonable rates. Uh, we, 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 we also get support um, to, uh, in terms of medical equipment. Uh, we, I mean, we have been able to work uh, with, with, with IDB uh, in support. Uh, the government has done a lot of work in investing in some of these things, but there's a lot always more to do. And so, uh, despite the fact that our budget, well, as it is, um, may never be enough, as I said, it, just, it, is, it, it's, it boils down to being prudent, it boils down to being responsible, uh, it boils down to making sure that we, we know where our priority areas are uh, as a ministry and investing in those priorities. Our infrastructure, physical infrastructure of our health system needs and desires a lot. Um, just in the next few months, you will see uh, where, again, working with our partners in the European Union and, 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 and PAHO, where many of our regional facilities will now become uh, smart health facilities. Mm -hmm. And this is a type of cooperation, international cooperation work uh, that Dr. Marvin Manzanero will also be able to assist us with and, and working together with our technical team. Uh, and so we have had great partners uh, in, in, in development of our health uh, across this country. There have been major studies done uh, in, in Belize. In fact, there's an assessment report um, that has just come out uh, that shares um, the experience of what is in Belize. And there's, of course, there's always need, as you know, to, to look at things uh, and, and make adjustments as, as we go along. Um, but I can say this, we have great, compatible, uh, competent people um, that can make sure that we are able to move this ship in the right direction. I have all confidence in Dr. Julio Sabido as my CEO, uh, who I have seen uh, been very passionate about his work, diligent and very straightforward, I can tell you, in terms of moving where we want to go as a ministry. Mm. And we have great technical people who has the passion for health in this country. Mm. And it trickles right down. You see, once we are able to have that level of respect and communication between ourselves, it trickles down to what we want at the end, which is to provide 
quality care for Belizean people. And I keep saying this to my team, we must provide that level of respect for everyone. Because with that type of support, then comes the type of customer service we expect to be issued to the Belizean people whenever they visit our facilities. And, and, and so I, I, I really want to, to thank all of our, our partners in development, uh, Isani and, and, and April, for the support that they have given to Belize, the support that they have given to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and they continue to do so. And the commitment from our Prime Minister, the commitment from this cabinet, the commitment from this government in ensuring that we invest in health through the rollout of NHI. I mean, NHI will mean a lot, uh, will bring a lot more benefits uh, to our Belizean people. What we're doing now, we're going to roll out in our into our district. We are expanding the numbers of persons who will have access to NHI in the south side. Uh, in Corozal, we recently did uh, launch the NHI clinic in, 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 in Shonush. That benefits the Corozal district, which is considered in fact in the statistics, second poorest district or the or the poorest district. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we we have to find ways and government is finding ways to ensure that we bring quality care to our Belizean people and the NHI is exactly going to do that. And when we roll out NHI across this country, many thousands of thousands of of Belizean will have access to these services. Well said. Yes. Thanks a lot for having joined us, Minister. We've come to the end of our segment. Um, it was a pleasure having you online with us to be able to share the details of the SI and, of course, what this means to the Belizean public. Thanks once again. Yes, thank, you. thank you very much and, 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 and God bless and continue to be safe, Belizean. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister. And with that, we are going to take another break. And when we come back, we will have our friends from the U.S. Embassy talk to us about financial literacy. So stick around for that. This COVID update was brought to you by Foltech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service.